Hi YouTube, Neil here with Facelift Interiors. Welcome back to our channel. So in this video, we're gonna be going through how to upholster or re-upholster a deep button or diamond tufted headboard. We're gonna go through an easy way for beginners how to measure out your diamonds. I'm also gonna go through different buttons you can use, whether it be just standard buttons on a, on a twine or stab buttons or prong button. I'm also gonna show you different methods of how you actually do the tufting as well. So as always, if you like upholstery tips and tricks, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel, hit that notification bell, so you'll see each time one of our videos goes up. Also, don't forget to follow us over on Instagram as well. And we also have a digger dog, as we sometimes do little short videos on there, which you might pick up some tips and tricks from as well. Let's get into this video. This is a how to deep button diamond tuft for beginners. Action. Right, so in this tutorial, guys, hopefully you can see we have a deep button headboard. It's quite large. This needs to be deep buttoned again in a new fabric. I'm going to kind of show you different techniques that I that you can use when it comes to deep buttoning because um, there's a lot of different opinions out there. So you measure your buttons. Some people add on three centimeters for the drop. Some people add two centimeters for each one. So this way, I'm going to show you a bit more of a practical way of doing it if you're a newbie or if you're just beginning your upholstery um, journey. This is quite a good technique to use. So what I'm going to do is I've got a, a scrap bit of fab, a scrap, a scrap piece of fabric here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my gun to gun this in so I'm going to use my long nose um, staple gun so that's a good tool to get long nose staple gun so you can get right down into them holes and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to gun it down because obviously the fabric I'm using is a velvet I've used it many times it's very stretchy so what I'm going to do is start gunning this down I'm going to put a good few state a good few diamonds in and then I can sort of mark with a pen in the holes and then I can take it off take the fabric off and measure the the size of the diamond I'm going to need and then I'll work out on the new fabric there what I'm going to do so basically what I'm doing is putting the fabric on and then marking the diamonds and then I can see exactly how much allowance I'm going to need but this is going to be a really good tutorial if you're just getting started so it's going to be a way of you working out your diamond sizes without trying to guess um, this way it's going to show you it's pretty accurate how the size of your diamonds are going to be another thing you need to be aware of if you're going to do buttoning is to make sure that your velvet's running the same way the right way because you can always turn the fabric and run it if you don't want to put any joints in it but this headboard is pretty pretty giant i've got to put a van dyke in it either way i've got which means i've got to put a joint in it so always make sure if you're going to be doing this like i'm going to do now which is gunning the fabric in make sure that the fabric is going the way that you want it to go when the fabric's on because i know that the velvet is running down which means the pile or the nap is coming down this way you see it's got a lot of stretch in it definitely side to side this fabric has got a hell of a lot of stretch in it so make sure you just get it on the way that it's going to go on when you actually do it what i'm going to do guys is i'm just going to start i'm just going to start by sticking a few staples in and sort of working my way out from there. This headboard could be done quite quickly with a gun, which I have done before. I have done like headboards really fast using a gun. So it is a way of upholstering. You can do it that way. There's no, there's nothing to say that you have to use. You know, you have to put the button through, pull it through, then dress the pleat. You could do all this with a gun if you wanted to, but I'm just doing it this way to show you guys how to mark your diamonds out properly. This stuff is super stretchy. <laughs> what you want to make sure is that your you haven't got no bagginess. You can see there that that's going to be good. If I put a staple in there, it's too much bagginess there. So you want to pull it up, make sure there's no bagginess there at all. Get a gun in there. I see people asking me, are you always going to get these ripples? And yes, you've got to be pretty good not to have any whatsoever. So you can actually dress these as you go. Some of you might find this a better way of doing it. Gunning them in and then look, putting stab buttons through or then putting the the buttons on the cord through. Right, so you can see that that is starting to take shape. I'm just going to do one more here and then maybe one more here and then we should be able to get an idea of our diamond sizes. The danger with gun buttoning, with gunning it all on, 
is be very careful with your staple. Sometimes you can staple all the way through the fabric and the, and the staple will go all the way through and then you've got a big hole. And then sometimes, you know, you've got to stick loads of staples in it then to hold it down. And then if you put too many staples in and the button doesn't cover the staples, then you've got a bit of an issue. So if you're gonna do this, just be careful. Maybe don't put your, your nose all the way in, hold it off a bit so the pressure's not so hard and it doesn't fire straight through the fabric. Right, so last one. Now the, the correct way of buttoning, I see some people do it where the pleats go all different ways. How do I explain? Let me get this one in. All right, I could put a temp in there. Right, so what I mean by that is technically the right way to button is so the pleats all face the same way. So that's going down, that's going down, that's going down, so you want all the pleats going the same way. Sometimes you are gonna come unstuck where, let's do this one. So let's turn this pleat the other way. So it doesn't look bad at all, you wouldn't notice, but you know, technically, if you wanna be really finicky about it, that is the wrong way. They should all be facing down. And the reason is so they don't collect dust. The reason the folds all go downwards is so they don't collect dust. And if you can, try and get them so they're all going the same way, which would be this way. So this fabric is pretty good, it's quite forgiving. So it's really good for buttoning because you can get some really clean sort of lines with this fabric. If the fabric's a bit stiffer and it's been FR'd, you're definitely gonna get a bit more of this rippling around the edges because the fabric's a lot stiffer. You also need to bear that in mind when you're, when you're buttoning. Fabrics make a big difference when it comes to doing this kind of thing. On something like this, you can use, this is a, this is a stab button. This is um, a prong, we call it a prong button. And so what you can do is push this button through through the hole and then open that up on the back of the wood like so and then you put a couple of staples here and a couple of staples here that will hold that button in place so that is a way of doing it let me just show you how that would look but what we're going to be using is the traditional button on twine i find it easier to manipulate with this you can sort of pull it in different angles if you need to with the prongs it's got to be quite rigid you need to be bang on so basically the prong button will go straight through the hole, that was quite easy. So let's do this one as well. The prong button will go straight through once you find the hole, like that. And then on the bottom, so this is how a prong button will look. So this is a prong button, you would open it up like so, like that. Get your gun, it would fire. Oh and actually hit it and then this side you do the same so that is how a prong button works but the problem is with prong buttons still see there we've still got a bit of movement you have to be that and see that's not sitting down properly so you really have to push them down and get a good fixing underneath so that's the reason i prefer to use these the buttons on the twines because you can get a good solid pull from underneath and you're gonna get a good solid fix in. Other buttons available are, so this is a stab button. Now these I would, you'd only use these on certain headboards, um, manufactured headboards. I wouldn't use them on our manufactured headboards, but some of the high street manufacturers basically do what we've done here, but then they hammer these in. There's nothing wrong to, with them, per se, but um, you don't have much control again with these so these are the, they're the options but i prefer to use the good old button on a twine so now we're going to take these out and then what we're going to do is we're going to use our marker pen to mark our buttons so guys now what i'm going to do is i'm going to use my marker pen to literally just go into the middle of these staples and mark this fabric right down in the bottom So now we can take that off and now measure our distances between the marks and then we can work out what we're gonna to need to do to get our diamonds. So let's take this off and then I'll see you back in the other room. So now we've got our measurements here guys. So we've got our marks. So I'm just measuring these. Averaging at around seven and a quarter. So the side to side of our buttons is gonna be seven and a quarter. So I'm just gonna write that down. 
and then top to bottom is going to be we're going to do is just measure these and get the average nine and a half 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 so yeah that's pretty bang on 9.5 So now we can get our fabric and start working out our diamonds, measuring out our diamonds on our fabric. Right, so this, this uh, headboard is going to have a Van Dyke join in it. So I've already done that side, I've already marked it all out. So I'm just going to carry on with this side. So that is 11 from the bottom. So I'm just going to draw a line across there and then I'm going to start working out my diamonds. And obviously there's a join going up here. So I'm going to mark that out as well. I've already done a video on this, it's on our YouTube. How to do a Van Dyke join. Um, this video is more about different techniques of doing a button headboard. So what I'm doing here guys is I am drawing out my diamond sizes. So first one doing the top to bottom measurements which is nine and a half. And now I'm going in between those lines at four and three quarters and doing them lines as well because that sort of sets out your diamond height. So now I'm going across doing my seven and a quarter. So you're going to aim to hit these marks with your buttons when you're putting the buttons in as best you can. Right, so that is our diamonds marked out using the measurements we got earlier. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So my join, ladies and gentlemen, is going to go up here like so. That is how the join is going to go. So unfortunately you can't see it in this clip, but what you want to try and do is fold the fabric back, aim your needle straight through the mark that you've made, and that should be good for your buttons. Sometimes it's going to be impossible to hit your marks every time because even if you're two mil out on a button, and then the next button you're going to be four mil out and it's just going to yeah, keep getting worse. As long as you follow the lines, the lines are really important because if you twist and you come off line, that's when you start getting excess fabric and then not enough fabric for pleats. Here, what I'm doing is I'm putting my buttons in and I'm dressing as I go. I like to dress my pleats as I go. I've seen some upholsterers, they just bang them all in and then they go around dressing it all afterwards. I prefer to pleat and dress my pleats as I go, but each to their own, however you find it easier. Just go with what you're comfortable with. Here we're going to show you in the next clip a close up of how we do these buttons. So what I'm doing here guys is if I've missed my holes or I've missed my marks, what you can do is freehand it. So what I'm doing here is I'm using my finger to fill where the button hole is because we've already, obviously the hole's already been drilled out. Pop the needle through the hole, thread the twine, both ends of the twine through the needle, pull the needle through, and then pull the button down really nice and tight from underneath. This is how it looks from underneath. So obviously the needle comes down, pop the twine through, twist the twine around your fingers, pull nice and tight one way, put two staples in, then pull it in exactly the other direction and put two staples in there as well to hold it nice and securely. So another technique we can use guys is by using our long nose gun and shooting the buttons in. Instead of pulling the buttons in, we can do this with a long nose gun, but you have to be careful because the, if you miss or if you put too many staples in, you end up with a big hole. And then if the button doesn't hold it, then you can end up with all kinds of issues. So if you're gonna do this, I'd say do it with a stronger fabric. It is a good way of doing it because it's fast. So two staples in there. Let's do this one as well. So as always on, like on the rest of the headboard, all the pleats are going down. I mean, it's not the end of the world if they end up going a different way, but it's best practice to get them all going the same way. So again, pulling that down nice and tight. See, see what's happened. It's not gone in properly. And that is the risk you run when you're gunning them in that you could damage the fabric. And once the fabric's damaged, you're in big fucking trouble. So I'm just gonna do a few more. So I'm not gonna show you this in depth as we showed you earlier on the scrap bit of fabric. 
So now those are gunned in, we can just go around dropping these, um, dropping these buttons in. So once you finish stapling your diamonds in, you go around dropping your buttons in using the needle and the twine or using a prong button like we showed you earlier. So that was just a couple of methods for beginners in getting started in diamond tufting. We hope you found it informative and interesting. So obviously there's lots of other techniques as well. Lots of people do things different ways. I just found these methods really, really good when I was starting out. So hopefully you find them useful as well. So as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. <laughs>